Some of you may be wondering why my Lucia is juiced up. The answer is so obvious. It's just because, like, you know, she's cute. Hi, welcome back to another Punishing Grey Raven video. My name is Lace, and today we are going to be talking about, like, kind of a progress check-in. So it's been about 10 days since launch. There's been a lot of things that have happened, but I kind of wanted to show you guys what I've been up to, as well as go through a bunch of, like, the different learnings or, like, kind of regrets or, like, lessons learned kind of thing. There have been a lot of, like, decisions that I've made that I've kind of come to regret, and I wanted to talk through those. But my account isn't just, like, fully bricked. It's not like I made all bad decisions, right? And so I do want to go through the positives as well. And so I guess with that being said, let's just jump right into the video. I guess to kick things off, why don't we start with the negatives? As you guys can probably tell, I'm kind of like a bad news first please kind of guy. And so yeah, let's have a look at my mistakes and like what you shouldn't do. And so yeah, I juiced up my Lucia and I'm not sure if this was exactly the best move. Lucia has been very, very good, but when I compare her to like some of the other characters, I'm kind of like, wait a second, why am I not doing damage? I watched some of my friends play and they absolutely like just crush everything, right? And so I guess that's kind of my first regret. As much as I love Lucia, she is not really making my life any easier. And so with that in mind, Lucia is my first regret, like juicing her up in her train, like with the promotes, evolves and the skills. I am just so drained right now. You can see I only have 32k cogs, like oh my lordy. This girl has got me broke and unfortunately she's just not exactly that great. However, what's done is done and so I'm just thinking about how I can transition like maybe over to a Bianca. To be honest, I'm still working it out and so I'll keep you guys updated. The second one is like kind of linked to the first one, which is this guy over here. So I did get the five star weapon for Lucia and so I was like well I'm just gonna juice Lucia and her weapon and hope that I can clear like probably the entire game with them. And I think I can. I don't think it's unrealistic to actually do that. However I didn't think that Lucia would be like so replaceable so fast. The thing about this weapon is that you guys can see I've like really really invested into it. I would even say that it's probably over invested and the thing about weapons is that like although they are interchangeable between characters realistically they are only interchangeable between the variants of one character. And so what I mean by that is that this sword can only be used by like other Lucias. Now, if we think like one month or three weeks or whatever ahead, it's probably going to be alpha, right? However, if you are going for alpha, you typically also want her weapon as well. And so like, where does this guy go? And since it's like already at overclock six, I've actually like committed so much resources to this guy. Maybe ice Lucia down the line. I don't know. But like at this point, this is about to become a sunk cost. Or maybe, you know what? Maybe I just go like all in. I keep going all in on Lucia. Maybe that really is the move. But at this point, investing into Lucia and her weapon is kind of a no-no. Again, guys, I'm still working on it. I'm not 100% sure on this one. All right, next we've got these memories over here. And so as you can see, I'm a dumb dumb because I fully juiced out like these three up here. And so these two are the Hannah sets. This is Shakespeare and this is Heisen. My rationale was that like almost every six star memory is actually going to be used. So might as well juice them all up. What I completely forgot about was that these guys actually have substats. So I'm talking about like the HP and the crit over here. And so what this means is that like my Lucia is like super, super tanky but she does no freaking damage because these guys down here, which I don't have any six stars for, this is where the attack really is. And you guys already know, PGR is like, it revolves around damage and dodging, right? I don't need more HP if I can dodge well. Well, yeah, I guess I need more HP then. But the fact of the matter is that like, I'm being gimped or rather I gimped myself, like not juicing these attack ones down here. And so this is probably like one of the biggest tips or biggest learnings that everybody should take away from this. Do not prioritize these three up here because they give HP and crit, prioritize these ones ones down here because they give attack and defense. Attack is just way more impactful, especially in the early game where like crit is just like pretty crappy. It just guarantees like a DPS upgrade, whereas crit like, you know, it's just a little bit too minuscule at this point in the game. And so that's probably like my biggest three regrets, I guess. Or rather, when I look over here, there are a couple more, okay? All right, let's have a look at this one over here. And this is S Nanami. So I actually did in fact reroll. And what I landed with was an S Nanami on the limited banner, aka the Lee banner. However, what Nanami does is she really puts you in an awkward place. And I would say that even B Nanami is better than S Nanami. And the reason is because B Nanami actually does like the shred, the physical shred. So I'm looking at this one over here, attacks lower the target's extra damage reduction by 10% for five seconds. And so for B Nanami, not only does she have physical shred, but like your S Nanami doesn't have that, especially in like the early parts of the game where like majority of your characters are gonna be like physical based. I'm talking about like your S Lee, your A Bianca, your B Lucia, your B Liv, your S Liv, they're all physical physical, 
right? And so really, it's in your best interest to juice this girl up and get that physical defense shred up as well. Well then, what does S Nanami have going for her? Well, I guess she has fire shred, which is pretty interesting. And the reason it's interesting is that if you really want to take advantage of this, you should have gone to Karenina. Well, I should have gone Karenina. And so yeah, pulling S Nanami has put me into like a really, really awkward situation where I still have my selector actually, because on my beginner banner, I was actually able to pull S live. However, now I have a choice. Do I want to go for like the long-term game plan and get like S, oh, whoops, S Kamui, this guy over here, or do I want to go for S Karenina, like this lass over here? And the only reason that Karenina is a possibility is because I have S Nanami. Fire DPS to the fire tank that does fire shred, like that is a match made in heaven. However, as you all know, people tend to like trash all over like the fire team, but I don't think they're actually that bad. And on top of that, if I get S Karenina, then I can use that like super cute coating. Like, look at that. That's so cute. But yeah, so that is the dilemma I face. So in the beginner banner, I pulled the S live and that's pretty good. However, I also do have an S Nanami who has kind of become redundant. Honestly, I should have like left her bench. She shouldn't have come as far as she has and I should have just juiced up the B Nanami. And so yeah, this has like left me in a very, very awkward position. And I think I can recover from it, like, you know, given a month or so. But I have put like a significant amount of like materials and stuff into her. I'm pretty sure she's like fully maxed right now, but she really should be like sitting on the bench to be honest. And so I think as far as like characters or even like regrets go, that's actually probably it, which isn't all that much to be honest. Okay, well like, you know, when you listen to it, it doesn't sound like that much, but like really I've sunk a lot of resources into a lot of this. So yeah, just looking at this Lucio weapon, like this really should have been like Liv's weapon, like Liv's weapon should be OC6. Just because like all three forms of Liv are just gonna be like very enduring. They're gonna last a very, very long time. Yeah, you live and you learn. It is what it is, right boys? Okay, so let's talk about what I did do right. Honestly, guys, I think I've done a lot right. And that includes like pushing a lot of my stamina into this guy over here. It is not exactly like 100% the best thing to do, but it has like actually gotten me some pretty decent like stats for the memories. The moment I hit like level 45 or level 48 or whatever it is, I pretty much dump every single point of stamina into this boy over here. And I have actually gotten like quite a fair few bits of six star memories. However, I do want to say that like it is actually possible to over farm this. And the reason that it is possible to over farm it is because like when the event comes, like when the alpha event comes, we are going to actually be farming a stage that is very similar to this. But in my opinion, the earlier you can get your six star memories, the earlier that you can like actually commit to them and juice them up and like the earlier you're going to actually progress. So I personally don't think that like sinking stamina into this guy is particularly a bad thing. Again, I do think that it's probably been one of my best decisions so far. The other thing I'm proud of for resources, I don't think I've actually farmed a single stage of skill point drops yet. On top of that, I've farmed maybe like cogs once or twice, but I'm starting to get like really, really hungry. And I don't think I've touched the construct EXP yet. And so like the reason I'm proud of that is because like realistically, you shouldn't be touching them yet. If you are being smart about like your resources and not sinking them into random places like I did, then you shouldn't be farming like the construct EXP or like the skill point drop. And so yeah, I think that's it for the resources. And so let's have a look at these guys over here. Now, memory rescue is one that I kind of regret because I completely forgot about it until I saw it just then. If I just put in some effort to like clear the Catherine and the Ife, I really think that the Darwin that I get from this, which completes the two set, it's going to be really freaking massive. However, I do have Boomer hands and so like I still haven't finished this, so it just cut me some slack, guys. All right, as for Warzone, Warzone is really tough. I'm getting absolutely destroyed, guys. Look at me. I'm 204k down here. I'm still getting demoted. It's not looking really good for me. Up until now, I've been doing okay. Like I think promotions and defending. However, like it's starting to get really, really freaking hard. But all in all, not really any regret here, maybe just like not being able to try hard as hard. But to be honest, I'm having fun taking this game a little bit more casually than some of the others. Like if I had to spend like freaking like three hours just to grind out a new high score or something, like I'd probably get sick of the game really, really quick. Especially because like I admit like my mechanics are not that strong. But yeah, that's probably something I'm proud of. I'm proud of like not sinking an overly large amount of time into these guys here. And I guess on that note, if we go over to Pain Cage, I think I'm doing okay. I've got three challenges left, one over here and then two over here. I've gotten decent scores. However, you guys have seen like my messed up teams. And so I still am kind of working through that. Right now I'm at 27%, which is not too bad. And I still have like another freaking three bosses to go actually. Yeah, to be honest, I think my pain cage is doing all right. And so yeah, as you guys can tell, I think there are a lot of things that I can improve on, but there are a lot of things that I think I did do right. Oh, okay. This one is an interesting one. So let's talk about co-op real quick. I actually am not sure what the right move is here for co-op. So let me tell you guys the facts and like what I know and like my kind of analysis and you guys tell me what you think. I believe it takes like three weeks to actually be able to farm enough for a five-star guaranteed weapon in co-op. However, all 
all of that stamina that you're sinking into co-op. So that's about 420 stamina, if I'm not wrong. 420 stamina, you could actually like put it into like the memories instead. So this guy over here. And so the decision is between farming for like potentially about two, the expected value is like two six star memories. And then you need to do that for three weeks. And so that's about like, let's say six to seven six star memories. So six to seven six star memories versus a guaranteed five star weapon. However, on this like stage, I can only do like the easiest one. Me personally, I feel like it's actually not really worth doing this guy. And so I haven't run it too much. As you can see, I've run it seven times, but after seven times, I was like, wow, this is like really, mm, I don't know if this is it. And on top of that, like, as I mentioned before, we will be farming a whole bunch of memories when we get into the alpha event anyway. And so in that regard, it kind of makes sense to actually sink the stamina into the co-op. So yeah, those are like kind of the facts. And honestly, I still am not sure which way I'm leaning on, but I personally don't think like dumping stamina into co-op versus dumping stamina into like your six star memories is like either of them I think are fine. Oh, look at that guys. It literally just opened up. But yeah, to wrap it up, I don't think like putting your stamina into the co-op versus putting it into the six star memory farm. I think they're actually both okay. For now, I'm probably going to still stick with the memory farm, but like we'll see how it goes. Co-op for me at least is just like insanely laggy, even if I play with other Australians. Actually, now that I think back to it, like this really ruins my experience of the game. Playing co-op makes me really not want to play the game anymore. So I think, yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely sticking with the resources here. All right, guys, I think that's a pretty exhaustive look at like, you know, where I'm kind of at. And if you guys do want to measure against me, let me know where you're at. If you started on day one, everybody should be at about level 50. And then you should have about like your like six characters or so. You should have like your A Bianca and you should also like have a couple more units. So I'm talking about like the units that you're going to be getting from your beginner banner. But yeah, that's a pretty good summary of like my personal biggest regrets and like, I guess my proudest achievements or like the right decisions, I guess. But otherwise, I am having a lot of fun in this game. I'm so glad that like the stamina, especially for the resource stages. And that might be like part of the reason why I like to farm it so much because it is so incredibly fast and it sucks up 30 stamina. What this means is that like the level of commitment that I need to actually sink into this game is a lot less. And that is a really big advantage for me, especially because I'm trying to make content and I am juggling like, you know, four other games. But yeah, with all that being said, I think there's actually nothing left to be said. And so let's wrap this baby up. All right, so I have a secret question for you guys. And that is, well, how are you guys doing? What level are you? Where have you pushed your characters up to? Are there any investments that you like wish you didn't make? Or are you overall very happy with like your entire team? Are you happy with the game? Let me know how you feel about all of that down in the comments below. And I would really appreciate it because it means that you actually made it to the end of the video. And really for that, thank you so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. You guys already know what to do. And as Nanami once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.